I'm reading from the History of the Smiths. Actually, it's on my uh, it's on my website. It's called Johnny Johnny Appleseed Comes to the Rescue: The War of 1812. The hogs find their way home. The history of the Smiths. It's uh, in October, eighteen eleven. A little company consisting of Erastus Smith and family, of wife and three children, Samuel C. Spencer, a brother of Mrs. Smith, Cyrus W. Marsh, and Beal Ensign, started for Vernon Trumbull County, Ohio for the Firelands arriving in Greenfield about the 1st of November. That's strange to arrive in November. They brought with them two wagons, four yoke of oxen, three cows, and 23 hogs. Yeah, yeah it's from a history book. It's come out of Joe Smith's? Yeah, it's my great, great, great grandfather. After crossing the Cuyahoga, they were strictly pioneers. Cuyahoga is a river near Cleveland where if they crossed it, they were, became into wilderness. The country was a vast wilderness, not a house to be seen on the route west of the Cuyahoga River until the lonely cabin of Hanson Reed in Greenfield was reached. Mrs. Smith and her children remained at the house of Mr. Reed until the men could roll up a house which was built on the place now occupied by Hiram Smith. The house was indeed a primitive dwelling place when the family moved into it. But the primitive place Hiram Smith was near the Huron River down in the Reed Center in Greenfield, Glen. Actually, in Stu Ben, not a Stu Ben. History of Huron and Erin Counties. This is from the History of Huron and Erin Counties book. It's a book without a window. The dwelling place moved to that being without a door or a window hmm. had only a few feet square of pudgeon floor. It can't be without a door or a window. A door. An indoor were soon provided, however, made also of pungems, and the family lived in com comparative comfort through the winter, which was a very severe one. It was with difficulty that the cattle were wintered through. They consisted largely on shrubs and twigs of trees, which were cut down for them to browse on. Hogs ran in the woods and fed on the abundant mast or shack, which the forest yielded. The next spring, the hogs all went back all to Vernon and Trumbull County, where they were subsequently found on Mr. Smith's return during the excitement of the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. The excitement, they call it. Of the War of 1812 is an excitement. Now, why do you have to go all the way about so far away? Why do I? Yeah, if you have to be going to. You ask why. That, I mean, they went already through those things. Humanity went already through that. The important thing is from today on what we do to make it better. You're not worried about the hogs. Yeah. What about the. Uh, the embedded uh, genetic information in my history huh? no, embedded in my genes from my it's ancestors. From now on, from today on, we must change that pattern. If I don't know, how could I know the you know, I know. ignorance of the past? You know, no. If I don't know the past, how could I know the present? Those who do not learn from history are Dome to repeating its mistakes. Yeah. I may make a mistake, repeat they history's mistakes. Exactly, people say, just uh, are in head and together because 
The way you cure war is to read about, study war. If I get so, Mr. Smith was born in Parkland, Connecticut. <laughs> That's just the point, the karmically. January 7, 1784. Why don't you want to hear about the history of the Smiths? Now that they want to know the history of Miletus, but you refuse to give it, so you now the children do not know the history because it was lost. That, that ignorance is bliss, and you prefer ignorance over knowledge. It's not better. An uh, example, it's better to know everything about cancer and cut cancer or not to know anything about cancer. They have a whole book about cancer. It's a famous Pulitzer Prize, anything about it, not to have Nobel it. Prize winning book about that guy who wrote something about cancer. Mm -hmm. well, I'm telling you, I'd rather not know anything about it. You would not like uh, somebody to suffer things he doesn't have about. But anyway, so he migrated with his parents to Trumbull County in 1799. Actually, you can get it on the website, davidsmith208wixsite.com. He married Mrs. Fanny Spencer. He married Fanny Spencer, the daughter of Samuel and Lydia Spencer, also of Heartland, Connecticut, who moved with their family to Trumbull County, and they moved in 1803. Mr. and Mrs. Smith resided in the townships of Vernon and said county until their removal to Greenfield, the previously, as previously stated. Erastus Smith was a man of much force and character and intelligence and was for years one of the leading men of the settlement. He was foremost in favoring and promoting everything pertaining to the general improvement of the infant settlement. His death occurred July 16, 1820. Mrs. Smith is yet living. Wow. She's living at the time of this history written. And will have reached the advanced stage of 94 years. She lived until December 7, 1879. She was the truest, in the truest sense, the help the meat of her husband, sharing with him the many privations of that early time with a remarkable courage. She retains a wonderful memory of early events, has been our main reliance in the collection of facts embraced in the history of this township. There were seven children vis-a-vis -vis Martin deceased, Lydia, Mrs. Denison Boscom living in the, now Mrs. Denison, Boscom living in the township of Norwich. Truwin and Erastus, deceased Lester, residing in Bronson. Hiram, residing in Greenfield on the old homestead. Hiram is the ancestor. And Henrietta, Mrs. Thomas Cohn, deceased. Mrs. Smith has living three children, 29 grandchildren, and Forty great grandchildren, the oldest child being seventy years old, and the oldest grandchild twenty three. The following is one of maybe incidents, many incidents in the life of Mrs. Smith, who was worthy of record as illustrating the perils which surrounded the houses of the pioneers. One day while her husband was in the Harvest field, Mrs. Smith left the house for a few moments. And on her return, saw a huge black snake crawling across the headboard of the James on which her youngest child was sleeping. The reptile disappeared under the foot of the snow. The Mrs. Smith raised one of the PGMs and with the tongs threw the snake out on the hearth where, where it was seized and killed by the dog. 
the two families previously mentioned with their hired men, Jacob Rush and Cyrus Mark, were the only inhabitants of the township at the time of full surrender in August 1812, a short time. After that event, another transpired which occasioned feelings of great apprehension and alarm not only to the pioneers of Greenfield, but to the inhabitants of the entire reserve. Information came and spread rapidly that the British and Indians were approaching the settlements with intent to massacre the inhabitants. A large party had been sent landing at Huron, which was supposed to be the forces of the enemy. Johnny Appleseed brought the dreadful intelligence to Greenfield after the surrender of Detroit. He was engaged by the settlers of this township in New Haven to go to Huron for the news once a week. One morning about nine o'clock, he returned riding rapidly and shouting, run for your lives. The Indians are killing everybody and burning their property. Intense excitement. That's Johnny Appleseed. Intense excitement ensued and preparations for flight were immediately begun. Clothing, bedding, and some other household goods were packed up with a cattle collected on the evening at the teams and wagons. A start was made for New Haven. The progress of the travelers was slow, and it was late in the night when they reached the house of Caleb Palmer. Besides the family of Mr. Palmer, there were then living in New Haven a family by the name of Woodcock, Alvin Coe and wife Luther Coe, and James M. Citrick. The next day, Saturday, the whole company started south with four teams and wagons, and for a distance of 15 miles, a road had to be cut every rod of the way. It was an exceedingly wet time, too, and the streams were much swollen, rendering them difficult of passage, the team and stock being compelled to swim across some of them. The company reached the Black Fork, a branch of the Muskegon River, by evening of the first day and pitched their tent on the bank by the night. Hungry and worn with fatigue, their clothing and bedding drenched with rain, which had been almost continuous during the journey. And haunted with visions of the red coat and scalping knife, the situation of the fugitives were, was indeed a deplorable one. They slept upon the wet ground as best they could, and the next morning pushed off. In the evening of the second day, while making preparations for a night's rest, a report reached them that they were being pursued by Indians who were only a short distance behind them. The wagons with their stores were left in care of two of the men and the rest of the party pressed on. With children, women and children riding upon the horses, after proceeding a short distance, it was decided to bring up the wagons and the teams with two men returned for them. Fredericktown, Knox County, was finally reached when they learned of the falsity of the last alarm, which arose from the fact of a fleeing party frantically shouting for who had lost their way in the woods. After a week's rest in Fredericktown, the families of Reed and Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Alvin Coe made the return to Mansfield. This is reading from the history of the Firelands, Huron and Erie Counties. Author W. W. Williams, 1879. This is also on the website davidsmith208.wixsite.com. This is the history of the Smiths. <laughs> Johnny Appleseed is included in the Rastus Smith in Greenfield County, Huron County, Ohio. <laughs>